Number 93, Integrated Concepts. A short circuit in a 120 volt appliance cord has a 0.5 ohm resistance. Calculate the temperature rise of the two gram of the two grams of surrounding materials, assuming their specific heat capacity is 0.2 calories per gram Celsius, and that it takes 0.05 seconds for a circuit breaker to interrupt the circuit. Okay, is this likely to be damaging? So, um, okay. So first thing is, um, I know if they're asking us to calculate the temperature rise, and they're talking about now, um, you know, oh mass, they're giving us specific heats. I know I'm dealing with this formula, Q is equal to MC delta T, right? That's way back into the thermal chapter. So um, to find delta T, that basically represents the change in temperature or AKA the temperature rise. All we simply have to do mathematically is just divide this by MC on both sides. And we will realize then that the change in temperature will be equal to the heat, you know, gained or lost by the material. In this particular case, it's a gain, uh, divided then by the mass of that material multiplied by the specific heat. All right, now, in order to then answer the question, I need to know these three variables, all right? So, do we know the energy, right? Q represents heat energy. Do we know the heat energy um, gained uh, by this uh, particular appliance cord? Well, what do they tell us? They gave us, sorry, they gave us a voltage. They gave us a resistance. Knowing voltage and resistance, we can calculate a couple of things. We can calculate current or we can calculate power. Now, which one of those two, current or power, involves energy? Right, power. You have to know power is watts and the watts are joules per second. So I'm going to use this formula. Power is equal to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Now, what that allows me to do when I solve this voltage squared is 120 squared divided by the resistance of 0.5. I realize the power now is going to be 120 squared divided then by 0.5. So about 2.88 times 10 raised to the 3, 4. All right, watts. Remember, this represents watts is just simply a joule per second. This is why it's important to know the units because what this tells us is that this is the amount of energy that's going to be supplied every single second. Now, how many seconds is their energy being input into this wire? Well, it tells us that it takes 0 0.05 seconds for the circuit breaker to break, right? To interrupt the circuit. So this is the amount of time. So all I now simply have to do is take this value and multiply it. Look at the dimensional analysis, 0 0.05 seconds. Notice how the seconds cancels. And what does that mean? That means I can find the total amount of energy, right? So multiply that by 0 0.05. And it comes out to now be about 1.44 times 10 to the third joules. Okay, now this is the amount of energy that is being inputted right into that wire. So now what I know is I know my Q. See, so yeah, I just take it systematically. So this is 1.44 times 10 to the third. Next, I want my mass. What's the mass of this material? Well, it told us two grams, but you know we don't need grams. We need kilograms. So two grams is going to be two times 10 to the minus three. Boom, done. Next, specific heat. Now, specific heat here, they gave us the value, but you know, they want to make it tough on us because they gave us calories instead of joules, and they gave us grams instead of kilojoule, uh, kilo uh, kilograms. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get there. Don't worry. So, um, <laughs> so uh, point two, right, calories per gram degree Celsius. We got to convert that into then joules per kilogram degree Celsius because we need those standard units. So how do we do that? So we're going to do it just like this. Watch. Do it on the right hand side a little bit. So point two calories per gram degree Celsius. And we got to get rid of the calories. So calories on the bottom, joule on the top. We have to know that there's about 4.184 joules for every single calorie. Oh, sorry about that background noise. Just the garbage men. So um, anyway, hey guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And uh, all right, back to business. So here, calories are gone. So now we need, instead of grams, we need uh, kilograms. So grams on the top, kilograms on the bottom, thousand grams and one kilogram, bye-bye grams. And now we're going to have joules per kilogram Celsius. So now we're good to go. All right. So... And you could have left it in terms of grams if you left this in terms of grams, by the way. But I just like, I know I'm in physics here. 
We know the standard units are all kilograms, so I just convert everything to standard units right away. Just so I don't have to think about it, I just have to recognize what the standard units are. So 0.2 times 418, excuse me, 4.184, uh, div- uh, multiply them by 1000. So here we're going to get about 836.8. So 836.8, and that's going to now represent joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Now that value should sound a lot more familiar, right? It's in more, it's in a familiar range. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the 836.8 and we're done. Just throw it into the calculator. So it's 1.44 times 10 to the third divided by now parentheses two times 10 to the minus three times uh, that exact value 836.8. Close the parentheses. And what do we get? So the temperature change is going to be 800 and uh, 60-ish degrees Celsius. Is this likely to be damaging? Eh, I think so. You know, depends on how protective, though, uh, that material around it is. But assuming it's, you know, through wood studs, uh, that that's a problem. Anyway, um, sure. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.